KNX AM and FM Los Angeles. There's more wallop, less waste in every drop of gasoline you buy because only the 1948 Kaiser and Fraser among full-sized American motor cars have highest compression engines as standard equipment. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the whistler will be heard after the following special broadcast. We are speaking to you from the White House in Washington. In a moment, the President of the United States will give you a brief address on the eve of the United States Security Loan Drive. Ladies and gentlemen, the President. My fellow Americans, I'm speaking you to, to you tonight about something that each of us as individuals can do to contribute to the winning of the peace. That is the purchase of United States savings bonds. Any workable program for world peace must depend upon a sound, strong, and expanding American economy. When we buy savings bonds, we contribute directly to the strength of our economy, upon which so much depends. By investing in savings bonds, we are fighting inflation, which is still our greatest economic danger. At the same time, we are building toward the economic security of ourselves and our families. At such a time as this, all of us can serve both ourselves and our country by saving all we can against the day when we can spend our dollars to better advantage. Our economic system, which has given us the greatest productive power and the highest standard of living in the world, is based upon individual enterprise, industry, and thrift. We need these qualities at all times in order to prosper. Under present world conditions, we need them more than ever before. Tomorrow, April the 15th, the nation launches its security loan campaign. As your president, I ask each of you to back the security loan to the limit by buying extra savings bonds, by signing up for payroll savings plans, where you work or, or the bond a month plan where you bank, and by volunteering to help sell bonds to others. This is the most important campaign for the U United States savings bonds we have had since 1945. It calls for everything we can put into it. It calls for volunteer work in every community, freely and patriotically given. It requires enough volunteers to talk to every American where he works or where he lives. The experience of all the war loan drives has proved that if Americans who can buy bonds are asked personally to buy them and told the personal and national reasons for buying them, the goal will be reached. Last Thursday, the city of Sandusky in Erie County, Ohio, began a week's campaign to sell their share of the security loan bonds in advance of the national campaign. Sandusky in Erie County wanted to be the first in the nation to do the job and show the country how well it can be done if everybody pitches in. Volunteers set out to visit every factory, office, farm, and home in Erie County. The newspapers and radio stations and every civic, fraternal, veterans, women's, and farm organization backed them up. I am happy to be able to tell you that Sandusky and Erie County oversubscribed their goal by 25% in one week. What Sandusky and Erie County have done in one week, every community and county in the United, in the United States can do beginning tomorrow. How well you do the job in your community will depend upon the number and the spirit of the volunteers who tackle it. This is a call to the minute men and women to rally again to build up the defenses of our national economy. For, as the slogan of the security loan puts it, America's security is your security. This campaign presents to us a responsibility and an opportunity. Every dollar that a family puts into savings bonds now will be a dollar building for the family's security. It will be a dollar fighting against inflation and high prices. It will be a dollar working to win the peace. You have just heard the President of the United States, Harry S. Truman, speaking in connection with the United States Security Loan Drive, which opens tomorrow. The President spoke from the White House in Washington. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX AM and FM, Los Angeles. A KNX reminder, veteran, can you make the grade, the grade you held on discharge from the service? 
The Army has openings up to tech sergeant just for you. If you've still got what it takes, come on down to your Army recruiting office and see about enlisting in your old grade tomorrow. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. And now the Whistler's strange story, Till Death Do Us Part. Norman Grayson was an art dealer, an enterprising young man who usually wore a friendly smile. Only last night, the sale of six original German manuscripts to the wealthy Richard Morris had brought him $50,000 enough to make anyone smile. But now the smile was gone, and Norman Grayson wasn't at all pleased with the way things were going. As he alighted from the cable car and walked along Divisadero Street toward the sumptuous funeral parlors of Carter and Duff, a thousand confused thoughts raced through Grayson's mind, thoughts that went back to last night at the Morris home in the Heights, where Morris's young and attractive wife had received him in the study. I hope you'll forgive me for asking you to come all the way out here at this late hour, Mr. Grayson. No, there's nothing to forgive. I was glad to come. It's only because of Richard. He's ill, you know. His heart. Yes, so I understand. Oh, but he'll be up and around very soon. Richard's like that. Bounces right back. Glad to hear that. The manuscripts, Mr. Grayson. That's all he's been talking about the past few days. He's determined to add them to his collection. I, uh, I do hope the price will be right. Uh, 35000 Mrs. Morris. 35000 Mm-hmm. I see. Well, perhaps I shouldn't say this, Mr. Grayson. I, uh, I don't suppose it's good business. Uh, what's that, Mrs. Norris? 35000 It's really a bargain. Oh, you think so? I know so. I know manuscripts, too, Mr. Grayson. I've worked with them for some time. The Winston Galleries. I was there for five years. That's where I met Richard. You didn't know that? Uh, uh, no, no, I had no idea, Mrs. Morris. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's why Richard asked me to marry him. Just to have someone around to help with his collection. Oh, that must be Dr. Reed. Come in. Oh, come in, Doctor. Oh, pardon me, Mrs. Morris. I believe I left my overcoat in. Oh, yes, there it is. How is Richard? Mm, slight improvement, I'd say, but still a pretty sick chap. Oh. Uh, doctor, this is Mr. Grayson, Dr. Reed. Hello, Doctor. Uh, how are you, Mr. Grayson? Doctor, about Richard... Is there anything mm, I... No, if he becomes restless later in the evening and can't sleep, you, you might... Yes, the prescription. Same dose as usual, I suppose. That's right. Call me in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Morris. Good night, Dr. Reed. Good night, Mr. Grayson. Good night, Doctor. Oh, he's a dear. Really worries about Richard as much as I do. Well, Mr. Grayson, shall we go on up and have a chat with Richard? <laughs> Richard. Uh, Richard. Janet? Yes, darling. Mr. Grayson is here. G Grayson? The gentleman with the manuscripts. The German manuscripts for your collection. Oh. Oh, yes. Manuscripts. Yes, Mr. Grayson and I talked it all over. He's going to sell them to you. Uh, darling, aren't you listening to me? Uh, Mrs. Morris, perhaps we'd better not try No, it. it's, it's quite all right, Mr. Grayson. Here, Richard, let me help you sit up. 
for, Janet? The check, you have to sign it. It's all made out, everything except the signature, Richard. That's it. That's a good boy. Now, here's the pen. All right. All right. Oh, that's right. There we are. Ah, oh, that's fine, Richard. Now I'll give the check to Mr. Grayson. Thank you. And the manuscripts are all yours. Isn't that wonderful, Richard? Yes, yes. Uh, Janet, a glass of water, please. Oh, of course, I, darling. I, I, here's the water. Uh, yeah. And here's something to make you sleep. Doctor's orders. Uh, now I'll be back in a little to look in on you. Uh, Good night, Richard. <laughs> You didn't know quite what to make of it, did you, Norman? You were puzzled about Mrs. Morris and the way she rushed the sale. And then the check. That puzzled you even more. Downstairs, as you walked towards the front entrance with Mrs. Morris... Uh, Mrs. Morris, the price I gave you on the manuscript was 35000 but this check is for... 50000 Yes. Yeah. That was the sum my husband intended to pay. I... We feel it's no more than right. We still consider it a bargain. Thank you, Mrs. Morris. <laughs> of course, I won't refuse it. Good. You must drop around to see us soon. Perhaps we can have dinner when Richard's up and around again. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Morris, but I'm flying to New York at the end of the week, and I... Oh, dear. I had hoped we could see more of each other. We, uh, we have so much to talk about. Well, I, uh, I'm not leaving until Friday. Dinner tomorrow night, then? Sounds wonderful. We'll have cocktails at six. I couldn't think of a better time. Love to have you, Mr. Grayson. Uh, Norman, isn't it? That's right. I'm Janet. See you tomorrow evening, then. Tomorrow evening it is, Janet. When you left the Morris home... You weren't at all quite certain that business in New York was important enough to drag you away by Friday. You could put that off for a while yet, as long as there was someone as attractive and as interesting as Janet Morris in San Francisco. No, business in New York could wait. Early the next morning, you cashed the $50,000 check, then spent the rest of the day roaming around town. Later that afternoon, when you returned to your hotel... Oh, Mr. Grayson, someone's been calling you all afternoon. Wouldn't leave a message. Oh? No? A young lady. No message, huh? No, sir. Here's your key. Oh, thanks. Oh, by the way, Mr. Grayson, you've seen the papers, I suppose. Hmm? Papers? Yes, the gentleman you were asking me about several weeks ago, Mr. Morris. Morris? What about him? Oh, you didn't know. He died this morning. Heart attack. <laughs> yes, it was all there in the evening paper. Richard J. Morris, prominent Bay Area businessman, art collector, dead. You hurried up to your room and began to pack, and then the phone rang. Hello. Norman, this is Janet. Janet Morris. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I just read the papers. I'm terribly sorry, Janet. Is there anything I can do? As, as a matter of fact, there is. Yes, I'd like to see you, Norman. There are a few things we should discuss about the manuscripts. Oh? What, uh... What is there to talk about, Janet? Don't you know? All right. I'll come right up. Uh, no, no, not here at the house. That wouldn't be right. Suppose you meet me in, say, two hours from now. I'll be at the funeral parlor making arrangements for Richard. It's under Visadero. I know. You'll be there, won't you? Yes. I'll, uh, I'll be there. Good. I wouldn't want you to do anything foolish, like leaving town in a hurry. With the prologue of Till Death Do Us Part, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now, friends, a special announcement. The first announcement on what we honestly believe is today's greatest tire value, barring none. You can now buy a nationally advertised Lee Deluxe 4-ply tire with a one-year written guarantee against road hazards for only $12.95 plus tax at Signal Dealers from Canada to Mexico. That's in the popular 616 size. Other sizes proportionately low-priced. Yes, you heard right. I said a top-quality 
616 Lee Deluxe Four Ply Tire. The same tire that sold until yesterday for $15.25, now reduced to $12.95. This is your signal dealer special for summer driving safety. Just compare. Why, that's actually less than you would pay for a second line quality tire of some brands. But get this. Never in 45 years has Lee of Conshohocken ever made anything less than top quality. And this rugged Lee tire at $12.95 with its patented double life cord construction is the same quality that has made Lee tires outstanding among leading brands. So now, right now, get your signal dealer's trade-in offer for your old tires. When you do, you'll agree that comparison proves for quality, for value, your best tire buy today is a Lee Deluxe tire for only $12.95 plus tax, exclusively at Signal Dealers. And now back to the Whistler. been a profitable business deal, hadn't it, Norman? Selling the six original German manuscripts to Richard Morris. But less than 18 hours after he signed a check to you for $50,000, Richard Morris is dead of a heart attack. And now his widow, the young, attractive Janet Morris, summons you to see her, and of all places, at a funeral home. When you reach the funeral home, a slender, solemn-faced young man leads you down a long, thickly carpeted corridor toward the rear of the building into a private waiting room. The door closes softly behind you and you're alone with Janet. Oh, Norman. I, uh, I'm sorry, Janet. Oh, it's, it's so awful, I just can't believe it. Poor Richard. And to think I, oh, to think I let you swindle him out of $50,000. <clears throat> Look, Janet, Please I... Please don't bother to deny it. The manuscripts are forgeries. I know. You, uh, you knew it all the time? Yes. Did he? Of course not. At first he wanted me to take him to Mansfield for appraisal. Mansfield? Fred Mansfield? Yes. But I talked Richard out of it. He had a lot of respect for my judgment. I see. So no one knows about this but us and the man responsible for the manuscripts. They're quite good. Ziegler's work, isn't it? I understand he's back in this country. Hmm. I told you yesterday I knew manuscripts. Had to be Ziegler or Klein. By the way, where is Klein these days? In a Berlin cemetery. He made a mistake. A bad one. Oh, he was such an artist. Oh, I wish they'd stop that music. I don't like it. Uh, Janet. Yes? What, uh, what are we going to do about the manuscripts? Well, I... I could turn the whole matter over to the police, but it would be such a bother. And, well, after what's happened, I just want to get away somewhere. So? So I think I'll give you the manuscripts. That is, I'll sell them back to you, Norman. For 50,000 bucks? Yes. You uh, wouldn't consider the original price, 35,000. Oh, no, no, Richard wouldn't like that. I'm afraid I'll have to insist on 50000 Are you in the market, Norman? I'll have to think it over. Well, all right. Janet. Yes? You know, I can't figure you out. Oh? I mean about the money. Morris must have left you a fortune. Why should you worry about fifty grand? 50000 is very important. You see, there's a catch to the fortune. It's, it's tied up in trust. I'm to get only 800 a month. Oh. That's awfully tough, isn't it? It is, when one is used to the things I am. Richard planned it that way. My own good, you know. Wasn't that thoughtful of him? Yeah. So when I came along, you saw your chance to grab off a little pin money, huh? Money that he'd never know you had. That's why you upped the ante from 35 to 50 grand on that check. Yes. Wasn't that thoughtful of me? You knew it was coming back to baby. Smart. Very smart. Norman, people will be arriving soon. I'm afraid I can't talk to you anymore. I'll give you till tomorrow night to think it over. It's nice of you. Eight o'clock. The house. And Norman... Yeah? Don't forget to bring the money. I'll tie a string around my finger. Come in, come 
in. Sorry I took so long. I was taking a nap. The servants are all gone. They're at the funeral party. Touching, very touching. Why don't you go into the study? I want to freshen up a bit. Fix yourself a drink. Thanks. Popular prices, of course. <laughs> Norman, you're bitter. Let's just say I got up on the wrong side of the world this morning. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm sold. <laughs> I better go in and fix a drink before the prices change. I will be more than ten minutes, Norman. Make yourself at home. You stand in the hallway, listening to Janet's footsteps overhead. Then a door closes. Silently, you slip up the stairs, past Janet's room to the far end of the corridor. If only you can get your hands on the manuscripts. A moment later, you step into Richard's room quickly cross to the desk by the window and begin your search. Minutes pass. Frantically, you continue to look for the manuscripts. Glance at your watch. Janet will be going back downstairs any minute. You need time, Norman, more time. The manuscripts are in the house somewhere. And then... Your eyes fall on the nightstand next to the empty bed. The nightstand. And the half dozen bottles of medicine. You pick up the small blue bottle. You remember this one, don't you? Sleeping tablets. You stick them in your pocket. In less than a minute, you're back in the study downstairs. My, aren't we cheerful? Why not? I may even go into a soft shoe routine. Want to see it? <laughs> Later, perhaps. Oh, you fixed me a drink. How nice. Here you are, sweetheart. Thank you. To us, Norman. Yeah, to us. You know, Janet, it's a funny thing about Ziegler. Seems to pop up in the most unexpected places. I remember the last time I saw him. London. It was right after the Marcus affair. You remember it, don't you, Janet? Janet. Uh, what? What did you say, Norman? The Marcus affair. The paintings. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I seem to remember. What's the matter, sweetheart? Don't you feel well? No, no. I feel fine. Just sleepy, I guess. I suppose it's stuffy in here. Oh. What you need is another drink, huh? Janet. Oh, uh, no, no. I don't, I don't think so. What were you saying about... Ziegler? Oh, yes. Right after the war, I... It won't I be long now, will it, Norman? Your voice drones on and on. Janet can hardly keep her eyes open. And then finally, she drops off to sleep. You keep talking. Then you get to your feet and walk over to her. Janet? 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 Oh. <laughs> Fallen asleep, have you, darling? <laughs> Don't worry. You haven't got enough to keep you asleep. Too long. Just long enough for me to finish here. Oh, by the way, I hadn't finished telling you how I got the manuscripts, how Klein stole them from Ziegler, and how I had to kill Klein to get them back. <laughs> yes. It was a bad mistake on Klein's part. You haven't much time now, Norman. The servants may be coming home at any moment. Quickly, you begin a systematic search of the study, and you're in luck. In less than five minutes, the manuscripts are tucked away in your inside coat pocket. You leave Janet, sleeping peacefully in the chair, and slip out the front door. As you stroll down the walk, you toss the bottle of sleeping tablets into the bushes. And then when you reach the gate, you turn and look back at the house. <laughs> so long, sweetheart. Sleep tight. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, since this is spring, the season when a young man's thoughts turn to love, and also to oil changes if he has a car, I'd like to say a word tonight on both subjects. 
Love, that is, and oil changes. If you really love your car and want to keep it young, happy, and purring with contentment, make this spring's oil change a change for the better. In short, make it a change to that new type signal lubricant that's your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. You see, because it combines 100% pure paraffin base with protective compounds, Signal Premium does much more than just lubricate. In fact, tests prove Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil reduces cylinder wear one-third and keeps motor six times cleaner than today's finest regular oils. So remember, if you want a sweeter running motor, if you want to keep wear down and performance up, the oil to change to this spring is Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. And now, back to the whistler. You're quite pleased with the way things have turned out, aren't you, Norman? The money you receive from Richard Morris is tucked away in a San Francisco bank. The manuscripts are in the mail for New York. And in a matter of hours now, you'll be on the plane heading east. And you're not too worried about Janet, what she'll do. You've just outsmarted her, that's all. She won't do a thing. She'll take her beating like a good little girl, perhaps look around for another sucker. Then an hour before your plane time, you're about to leave the hotel when there's a knock on the door. Yes? Lieutenant Benson, San Francisco Police. Your Grayson? Uh, yes, yes. What is... Can I come in? Thanks. Uh, leaving town, Mr. Grayson? Yes. Uh-huh. You had some sort of a business deal with a gentleman named Richard Morris a couple of days ago, didn't you? Did I? An art dealer named Mansfield dropped over to have a little chat with us yesterday. Seems Morris had asked him to check on some German manuscripts you had for sale. So? The manuscripts were forgeries, according to Mansfield. And when Morris died, sort of suddenly, well, Mansfield thought he should bring it to our attention. I don't know what you're talking about, Lieutenant. You were at the Morris home last night, weren't you? Okay. I just dropped in to say goodbye, that's all. Mm hmm You were there the night before Morris died, weren't you? The night you... Poisoned him because he was going to turn you in for fraud. Poisoned him? Wait a minute. Yeah, he was poisoned. Looked just like a heart attack. Now, listen, I, did, I didn't poison him. Janet, she must have. Mm -hmm. Why, of course, that's it. She had everything to gain. Don't you see? Money so and... she did it, huh? Then last night, she turns right around and takes some of the stuff herself. What? Yeah, the sleeping tablets. It turned out to be poison. She's dead, Grayson. We found the half-empty bottle hidden in some bushes in front of the house. Has some fingerprints on it. Be very interesting to see how they stack up with yours. Mm -hmm. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil, and fine quality automotive accessories. Featured in tonight's story were Doris Singleton and Gerald Moore. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by John W. Hart and music by Wilbur Hatch. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNX Los Angeles, the voice of Hollywood. 25 seconds until 9 p.m. B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watch Time. Wear a 21-jewel Bulova, one of life's choicest possessions superlatively dependable always. <laughs>